okay so uh, we are in seventh lecture of the course so if you see in the previous lecture uh, what i have done i have considered some structure like this okay and then i have considered its uh, gas in the surrounding medium okay so gas was certain amount of gas was on the uh, outer body of this and uh, so this was here basically and inside also we were having certain amount of gas actually okay which was uh, passing through this one so uh, we have seen that if you consider what will be happening i will be getting over here nothing but a kind of a stream tube of gas which is initially having some increase in its area and then after that its area is decreasing so this is nothing but a stream tube of gas okay do you know what is stream tube okay so this is nothing but a so this gas was acting as nothing but a stream tube of uh, the gaseous medium now what we have done at this particular point while we were calculating the thrust at this inlet point of this stream tube we considered that our pressure is p infinity density is rho infinity and velocity is v infinity okay however this is not the case in reality why because whenever uh, fluid will be coming so at far field we will be having velocity v infinity and pressure p infinity however there will be some relative motion between the this uh, engine uh, body as well as the surrounding medium so because of that relative motion what will be happening at this point we will be finding that velocity will be slightly higher than v infinity so it means it will not be exactly equal to that of the so i can say that properties are not exactly equal to that of the free stream properties okay however what we have done over here we considered that all the properties are nothing but equal to the free stream properties okay so basically this assumption in certain sense uh, uh, works if we just extend this stream tube and if we try to extend it outer the uh, body of the aircraft so if i slightly extend this stream tube outer the body of the aircraft then i can say that at this point my conditions can be v infinity p infinity and rho infinity is this point clear so what i am doing i am slightly extending the body of the stream tube uh, uh, sorry uh, this stream tube just uh, outside the body of the aeroplane i am considering that from outside itself that air has formed and it is actually coming out so in this situation the by extending the stream tube i can say that conditions can be equal to that of the free stream uh, properties however this area will not be exactly same as that of ai so if say area is a so this will not be exactly equal to ai so it will be slightly different than ai so we have to consider the contraction and expansion what is happening over here in this case of stream tube and accordingly we have to modify the area okay so that is what whenever we have uh, actually actual engine aircraft operation uh, whereas under the atmospheric uh, uh, condition uh, we can just by extending and assuming area equal to this we can actually get reasonable amount of uninstalled engine thrust okay now second important aspect is that whenever we considered this formulation what i have done i had actually only considered the i only considered this outer body and whatever inner components were there okay what were the inner components we had a shaft then we had some nozzle over here okay and then here we had some blades over here then some combustion chamber in this portion and then i had once again the set of uh, uh, turbine blades okay so this was the whole structure so in this structure what i want to know is that whenever the gaseous medium is present inside that gaseous medium was applying certain amount of pi pressure on 
this particular outer body similarly this will apply the pressure on the body of the combustion chamber and then turbine blades etc also okay so say some part of this pressure uh, particularly in the expansion phase will be utilized to rotate the turbine blade and then it will actually uh, increase the fluid pressure in the compressor phase but there are certain components and uh, even uh, because of the pressure of this gas on this entire solid structure there can be certain amount of force in the left direction okay however when we uh, do our theoretical analysis as i told you earlier that uh, we have considered that torque uh, sorry uh, thrust force is equal to pressure into ds integral okay and when we have estimated the pressure into ds integral for this particularly inner phase we have considered the gas control volume and then applied the momentum equation okay integral form of the momentum equation so what i can do over here also whenever i am considering the gas control volume i can consider my gas control volume in such a way so that all the solids are basically all the solids are subtracted from the gas control volume so my gas control volume can be something like this so if this is the solid portion this portion is actually not part of the gas control volume so now whenever i was estimating this term uh, pi ds vector over this surface i can also estimate this pi ds at this surface because of these solid objects okay and this entire effect actually of pi ds actually we were getting in the form of the change of momentum fine so basically uh, this is uh, one important aspect though over here our idea is mainly uh, the major thrust force is because of the force is acting on the outer body and this inner surface is neutralized in such a way so that uh, uh, forces are balanced but still if any reaction force is coming because of the any component that can be accounted by just subtracting the uh, inner control volume Uh, and uh, considering uh, sorry inner solid portion and then considering gaseous phase to be a only wherever gas is present that as the part of the control volume is this point clear okay so now let us discuss one another important aspect and uh, uh, now slowly slowly we will enter towards the understanding of the shock waves okay so we have seen from our very first lecture uh, that whenever we are having sharp changes in the properties okay sudden changes in the properties so particularly the zone which uh, demarcates or experiences this sudden change in the property of the fluid element that particular zone we call as nothing but a shock wave okay and we also uh, i have also given you one example of i have also given you one example of nothing but an uh aircraft and historically uh this was nothing but the first supersonic aircraft so what was the name bx1 or bsx1 okay so in this aircraft we experienced when uh mac number was close to 1.06 we had nothing but formation of a bow shock wave over here okay and if you see in this particular shock wave the shock wave was oriented in such a way so that majority of the time it is nothing but normal to the almost normal to the free stream so this type of detached shock wave is actually which is uh, uh, forming at uh, uh, sufficiently uh, far from the tip of the air, uh, this uh, aircraft this shock wave was having though certain curvature but majority of the time this is oriented in such a way so that it is almost normal to the 
free stream okay so as it is normal to the free stream it is mainly called as normal shock wave okay a shock wave which is normal to the free stream we refer that to as nothing but a normal shock wave okay now uh, this is uh, something which was done in 1947 when the same aircraft was used in 1948 uh then further uh, mac number was increased and mac number was actually uh, taken somewhere up to so in 1948 mac number was taken somewhere up to 1.45 okay so when its mac number is taken to 1.45 it was found that there is formation of a attached shock wave and that too that is nothing but an oblique shock wave so why i am calling it as an oblique shock wave because here what is happening uh, if this is the direction of the free stream so this wave is at certain angle to the direction of the free stream okay so it is oriented at some angle so this is the reason it is called as oblique shock wave and this is also attached to the body so you can also use sometimes keyword attached shock wave as well. okay then if you consider say another situation say you have some blunt nosed body and in this blunt nosed body you will be finding that shock wave will form something like this okay so for this type of shock wave when you are having some this say blunt nosed object here whatever shock wave i am getting here i will be finding that near in this zone which is very close to the tip near this zone i can say that my shock wave is almost normal to the free stream as we are moving away from the body it is becoming oblique because it is changing its angle from the free stream and when we move far away from the body then change in angle is actually huge so i can see that near the center it is at 90 degrees and whenever i am moving away from the center then gradually the angle of the shock wave is actually changing and uh, uh, gradually this angle is actually increasing as we are moving away from the center okay so it means that uh, ultimately uh, we have some object so shock wave i can say nothing but i have some portion uh, or some region where suddenly the properties are actually rapidly or abruptly changing okay now there can be certain thickness of the shock wave okay but uh, in reality if you experience you will find that the thickness of a shock wave will be even lesser than the thickness of a paper okay so if you are having a page of your say textbook or any other notebook so even the less than the thickness of uh, that particular page is actually the thickness of a shock wave in many uh, practical applications okay so what i can do if i have to uh, represent a shock wave in simplified sense i can say that i was having some flow which is happening say at point 1 and this flow is having pressure p1 say density rho1 temperature t1 and velocity v1 and say internal energy u1 okay so these are the uh, properties of this particular flow at this point now what i have done i experienced that some zone is there in this flow field and after this zone actually if i experience the fluid properties these are becoming nothing but p2 rho2 t2 v2 and u2 and whatever the value of property i am having at this point and at this point i am having actually significant difference 
okay so in between these two points what i am experiencing i am experiencing nothing but the significant difference in this particular situation if you see what i have done i have placed this portion over here nothing but normal to the flow field so if it is normal to the flow field then i can call this situation as nothing but a normal shock wave so this zone is nothing but a normal shock wave so in this particular zone something is happening after which our actually properties are changing significantly okay one in important point uh in compressible flow we are not considering the whatever analysis we are doing we are not considering the viscosity so we are considering in wizard kind of situation so if you have a in wizard kind of situation and if my flow is exactly normal to the shock wave i will be finding that variation of property will be only in if say this is my x direction i will not find any variation of the property in y direction and in z direction so variation of the property is only happening in x direction so i can say rho is nothing but rho of x pressure is nothing but p of x something like that and in this particular section what i have done whatever the zone i have considered if i draw it with dashed line this particular zone is also having nothing but a here if area is a at this point also area is a so i can say over here i have nothing but the fixed area and because of the fixed area also there is no compression and expansion of the fluid so this is the reason that another reason that we will not be having any variation in y and z direction okay so i am having each and every parameter say temperature is also function of x velocity is also function of x internal energy is also function of x so when all the parameters are only depending upon a single coordinate okay single location so i can call this situation as nothing but a one dimensional flow is this point clear so what i am saying over here that in visit automatically uh, we are considering from our earlier uh, uh, lectures we have explained that we will be considering in visit situation and uh, then i have presence of a normal shock wave okay in a flow field and the area of the flow field before and after the shock wave is actually remaining the same so if area is not changing then i will be finding that properties are only varying along the x direction single uh, coordinate system so uh, sorry single coordinate then i can say this is nothing but a one dimensional flow so we can say everywhere if you are having constant area of the flow field and a normal shock wave is present you can approximate that situation with the help of a one dimensional flow so you have to only apply the equations which are applicable for one dimensional flow okay and ultimately you will be finding this whole assumption if i try to uh, further uh, manipulate my uh, mass momentum and energy equations ultimately i will be finding all the equations will become nothing but simple algebraic expressions so my whole analysis of flow field will become very very simple only i have to do the algebraic manipulations okay so uh, that also i will show you subsequently so now i can say that <clears throat> in case of a one dimensional flow if i have to draw the stream tube of the fluid stream tube of the fluid will look something like this <clears throat> so this is the stream tube of the fluid in case of one dimensional flow okay here area is actually fixed so if area is fixed so properties are only function of single direction okay and now if i consider a stream tube something like this 
where my area is changing so here area is uh, itself a function of x so when area is itself a function of x what will happen i will be having presence of i will be having presence of variation in other two directions as well so my situation will not be one dimensional okay so properties can vary in other two coordinate systems as well however one small assumption we can take over here if this area variation is nothing but gradual okay so if changes in area along the x direction are gradual in that case we will be experiencing that the change of properties though there will be slight variations in other two directions also but because of the gradual change in area the major variations will be only along the x direction and the small variations in y and z directions can be neglected so under that condition i can consider that say my pressure is a function of nearly equal to function of x only similarly density also say function of x only velocity also function of x only and internal energy also function of x only so under this situation whenever we uh, get the flow this type of flow situation that is called as that is called as quasi one dimensional flow is this one clear so first situation we have where we are having purely a uh, one dimensional flow okay however in second situation say if we are saying we are having occurrence of a normal shock wave however area of the flow field is not fixed so shock wave is normal but area of the flow field is not fixed area of the flow field is varying so that area can also uh, have variation of properties in other two directions but if variation of area is gradual then variations in other two directions will be actually negligible and major variation will be only in x direction so if we consider this type of situation by neglecting the other two variations then we can say this situation as nothing but a quasi one dimensional flow situation okay so first we will refer to the normal shock wave analysis uh where we are having purely one dimensional flow situation then secondly we will refer to the uh, analysis of oblique uh, shock wave kind of situations and then finally we will refer to the quasi one dimensional flow situations and quasi one dimensional flow situations will majorly come uh, in the situations of say your nozzle flow diffuser flow where actually flow is happening through a solid object okay is this one clear because whenever flow is happening over an object then you don't have any restriction in terms of changes in area changes in area almost can be considered constant okay okay so now <clears throat> let's try to see that if we have uh, some sort of uh, normal shock wave kind of situation in a flow field of constant area then how we can actually deduce our uh, integral form of the governing equations into one dimensional situation okay so what i will do over here i will consider say this is my control volume and this control volume is having area a okay so this area this is not the dimension this is basically the area so if uh area of the cross section so it means in the transverse plane there is some fluid so that is participating in this area okay then i have presence of a normal shock wave over here okay and then i have say uh this is my point number 1 and this is my point number 2 so at point 1 i have velocity v1 internal energy u1 pressure p1 temperature t1 and and uh, which parameter i have left say density rho1 okay at this point i will be having say velocity v2 
डेंसिटी रो टू पी टू प्रेशर टी टू टेम्परेचर एंड यू टू इंटरनल ओके सो नाउ वन बाई वन वी हैव टू कंसिडर द एजम्पन सो द वेरी फर्स्ट एजम्पन ओवर हेयर इज दैट दैट एरिया इज कॉन्स्टेंट सेकेंड एजम्पन लेट्स कंसिडर दैट वी हैव नथिंग बट द steady flow situation if we have steady flow situation what will happen any term in our governing equation involving del by del t that will become zero and uh, physically we can say that with time velocity and all these properties are not changing at location 1 and at location okay so at location 1 and 2 the properties are remaining actually constant with time so now if you see your uh, uh, continuity equation continue integral form of the continuity equation says that volume integral of del by del t rho dv bar plus surface integral of rho v vector dot ds vector equal to zero so this is my integral form of the continuity equation so now uh, upon considering the steady assumption automatically this is zero so now i have to calculate this surface integral and obviously this surface integral i have to only consider along the x direction because i am considering if my variation is one dimensional and velocity is actually parallel to the x direction then i will not be having any component of velocity in y in z direction okay so that is the reason uh, when i will be calculating this surface integral this left area and right area will be actually participating okay so if i consider the left area uh, i can write now this surface integral of rho v vector dot ds vector equal to uh, if you see so in the left side i have density as rho 1 okay i have velocity v1 and area vector i will be having nothing but in the outward normal direction so means left direction so velocity vector and area vector are in opposite direction so product of area into v i will get a negative quantity so i will get over here minus a into v1 okay plus if i take right hand side then rho2 velocity is outside and area vector is also outside so i will be getting a into v2 and this will be equal to zero because this transient term is already cancelled okay so from here what i am getting rho1 a v1 equal to rho2 a v2 and area is common so i can write rho1 v1 equal to So what assumption we have considered over here? This is my generalized continuity equation. In this equation, I have only considered one assumption that steady state. So it means this is applicable for both viscous as well as inviscid flow, incompressible as well as compressible flow. So this is my one-dimensional mass conservation equation or continuity equation. Okay. So as I told you. that whatever the whenever i will be considering the approximation of one dimensional flow my whole integral form of the equation will become nothing but a simple algebraic equation okay now let's try to extend this for our momentum equation so if i extend the for the momentum equation then can you tell me uh, what are the different terms in momentum equation volume integral del by del t rho v vector dv bar plus surface integral equal to anything else okay so now let's once again one by one impose the conditions so if i put steady condition then this is so here i have put now steady flow condition then let's impose another condition that 
body force is negligible so the meaning of this is body force is okay now let's calculate this integral so if i calculate this integral once again i will be having left face and right face so first term i will get rho 1 v vector dot ds vector what i will get minus a v1 and then this v vector it is in negative x direction so i will get say minus v1 over here okay then i am having plus rho 2 a into v2 will be positive and then v2 vector will also be positive okay this will be equal to minus uh what is this p ds vector will become minus a and then minus of say this is p1 okay minus of p2 into what i will get over here simply a okay yes ah uh, yes that is why i will consider this as positive v1 v1 vector to negative direction will be yes yes that is the reason so that is what i am doing now that's why i have made over here this plus sign you have seen so by mistaken uh, uh, what i have said i considered that v1 is in left direction that's why i had put over here the negative sign but actually the direction of v1 you have not corrected and i have spoken actually wrongly actually the direction of v1 is in positive x direction only so as it is in positive direction it should be plus v1 okay so this is wrongly i have taken over here okay now if you see what i am getting p1 a1 plus rho1 a v1 square equal to p2 a area is constant so p2 a plus rho2 a v2 square okay so if i divide throughout by a then i i am getting p1 plus okay and if i okay so this is my nothing but the which equation momentum equation so it has become one dimensional momentum equation now you tell me for which type of system this equation is valid this is valid for cd body force is negligible i have not considered the viscous forces so it means in visit so these are the three important keywords okay so i have taken the most general form and from there one by one we have actually put the restrictions and then we are getting nothing but the simplified versions so up to this point is it clear now what we have to do similarly we will try to Uh, express our nothing but the energy equation okay so if i go to energy equation my energy equation is volume integral of del by del t rho u plus v square by 2 dv bar plus surface integral of rho v vector dot times equal to q dot 
because of the heat transfer minus this is the energy equation considering that soft work is not included over here and viscous work is zero okay so now steady assumption will make this zero okay steady assumption will make this zero so what i will be left with i will be left with this rho 1 v dot ds will become minus a v1 times u1 plus v1 square by 2 fine and then plus rho 2 a v2 u2 plus v2 square by 2 and say net amount of heat transfer is q dot only net rate of heat transfer and uh, minus <clears throat> what i will get v dot ds will be p1 into minus a and then this will be minus of p2 into a v2 okay <clears throat> what i will get from here now let's divide throughout by a so if i divide throughout by a i will be getting and let's uh, take this uh, uh, row one term to the right hand side okay because this is the negative term over here first term let's take it to the right hand side so i will get <coughs> q dot plus row one v1 u1 plus v1 square by 2 plus P1V1, okay. So pressure also I am taking to the left hand side. Then uh, on the right hand side it is becoming uh, rho two V two U two plus V two square by two and plus P two into V two. Okay. Now I know that. mass flux mass per unit area will be rho1 v1 and that will be equal to rho2 into v2 so what i will do left hand side i will divide with rho1 v1 and right hand side i will divide with rho2 v2 okay so if i do so i will get q dot by rho1 v1 plus P1 by rho1, huh? P2 by rho2. Okay. We have uh, seen one simple formulation that H equal to U plus PV, and that will become U plus P by rho. Okay. So I can write. H this U1 plus P1 by rho1 is nothing but H1 and this I can write as on the right hand side as H2. Okay, and uh, another uh, uh, version this Q dot by rho1 V1. So Q dot is total rate of heat transfer and rho1 V1 is actually the mass flux rate of mass flux. So this by this I can make some quantity small Q, which is on per unit mass basis. Okay, so small Q can be q dot divided by rho 1 v 1 so if i take these two assumptions then i can write this equation as small q plus these two will form h 1 plus equal to what is this energy equation in one dimensional situation okay so this is 1d energy equation assumptions are very clear to you in visit flow body force is negligible and steady flow condition okay so this is nothing but our energy equation which we have uh, uh, 
deduced from the one dimensional <laughs> equation uh, sorry for integral form of the equation actually we have uh, got the one dimensional equation okay up to this point is it clear let's now talk about one more uh, important concept which is nothing but related to the speed of sound because sound will be uh, one important parameter speed of sound will be important parameter when we are dealing with the compressible flow situations as i already told you in the very first lecture that we define speed of the flow per unit the speed of sound in that medium as nothing but a mach number and depending upon the value of the mach number if mach number is less than 0.3 then our situation is incompressible otherwise it is compressible and for uh, other conditions also if mach number is less than 1 then we have subsonic flow equal to one sonic flow and greater than one is nothing but supersonic flow okay so that is uh, it will be very very important so sound wave if you see can you tell me how you can express sound wave in physical sense so basically if you see in our surroundings we are having air and air is having large number of molecules and these airs are also uh, air molecules are also having certain pressure and temperature air is having some pressure and temperature so because of its pressure and temperature air molecules are having lot of random molecular motions okay now it means if these are having random molecular motions these are possessing some energy and obviously we have seen these possesses this energy in the form of its internal energy u okay now if say this room is quite silent and no one is talking over here so what will happen we will not get any sound over here however everywhere we will be having molecular motions now i am speaking at this point so what i am doing whatever the molecules of air because if when you speak just place your uh, hand in front of your mouth you will experience that something is striking with your hand okay so when you do it like this you will experience something is striking to your hand so it means whenever i am speaking what i am doing i am imparting energy to the molecules which are in my close vicinity if i am imparting energy to these molecules these will be having more energy in comparison to their neighbors so if these are having more energies these will be having more molecular motions because of which these will collide with their nearest neighbors and they will exchange this energy with their nearest neighbors okay after that this chain will keep on happening and whenever i am speaking and when you are listening there will be some lag between that because in between sound wave is propagating and that sound wave is propagating because of the molecular motions and that is transferring some energy from this location to that particular location okay so there will be one instant when while molecules are transferring the energy uh there that particular sound wave will pass through your ear when it is passing through your ear then actually you will be experiencing that particular sound okay so what i can say that that sound wave is nothing but or sound is nothing but it is what it is doing it is actually creating high energy molecules and these high energy molecules then because of the molecular interactions are actually moving and transferring that particular wave okay and that wave is then reaching to you and you people are able to hear that okay so it means and also it depends upon the uh, initial energy whatever is at the source of the sound that how far that wave will be traveling because whenever these will uh, exchange energy there will be certain losses and ultimately uh, that uh, at the end it will diminish and all will reach to their normal energy state okay so this is the reason that uh, i can say whenever a sound wave propagates okay it creates difference of energy among the molecules however one important point is the variation in the energy of molecules due to sound wave is very very slight 
you will not find that okay molecule has gained so much high kinetic energy that it will just go and uh, bounce with the walls of this particular obviously it will but that will be at very slower pace and however whenever it is striking with the wall i will not experience that its pressure is very large larger than the atmospheric pressure okay so there will be slight variation as i told you if you just place your hand in front of uh, when you are speaking in front of your mouth you will be finding that something is forcing but obviously this force is not very high that it is extremely large than the atmospheric pressure okay so i can say that i can say that that during the process of traveling of sound wave we are not having just uh, we have some variation in the property okay so let's consider that i have one sound wave wave front over here okay and one whenever this sound wave wave front will travel so for example you people are observers uh, you are standing over there or sitting over there so sound wave is coming towards you okay so it means sound wave was coming with certain velocity towards you okay so with i can say that sound wave coming means these fluid molecules were coming with certain velocity towards you okay now what i will do i will consider a situation that say this is my sound wave and observer is actually present on the sound wave if observer is just sitting on the sound wave so what it will experience when observer is sitting on the sound wave it will experience that some fluid is approaching towards it with say velocity say velocity a i will consider over here velocity a because when we consider the speed of sound i will be giving uh, the symbol a for speed of sound so if i am saying that my sound wave is moving at velocity a towards the fluid or towards you so if i put observer on the sound wave itself so i can say that fluid is moving towards the sound wave with velocity a okay and say pressure at this point is p density at this point is rho and temperature at this point is t now obviously some fluid will be on the ahead of the sound wave and some fluid will be on the downstream of the sound wave okay so the fluid which is there on the downstream of the sound wave there we will find that that is moving away from it and whenever it is moving away from it uh because of the presence of the sound wave we will be having certain changes in its property however changes will be nothing but very very slight so i can say that say change in its velocity is a plus da change in its pressure is p plus dp and change in its density is rho plus d rho and change in temperature t plus dt so these are the slight changes in the properties of the fluid medium uh, on the downstream and upstream of a sound wave okay now what i can do i can consider this as nothing but my uh, control volume and this is say control volume of fixed area okay so now i can apply over here the continuity equation what i will get as per the continuity equation <coughs> continuity equation will give me rho times a will be equal to rho plus d rho times a plus d a okay so ultimately i will get rho a will be equal to rho a plus rho d a plus d rho a plus d rho d a okay so here what will happen rho a rho a will cancel d rho d a will be very very small because these are two infinitesimally small quantities when multiplying these will be very small so i will get over here that a is equal to minus of rho times d a upon d rho so say this is equation number 1 is this one clear this is my equation number 1 now let me apply over here the momentum equation also okay 
So if I apply the momentum equation, then what I will get? What was my momentum equation? Tell me, 1D momentum equation. P1 plus rho. So P plus rho in place of V, we have now a square. Okay, that will be equal to P plus dP plus rho plus d rho into a plus d a whole square. Okay, so I will get p plus rho a square equal to p plus d p plus this will become a square plus d a square plus two d a a. Okay, so when rho will multiply, it will become rho a square plus 2 rho a d a plus rho d a square plus d rho a square plus 2 a d rho d a plus d rho d a square. Okay, now this will become zero. This will become zero. This will become zero. P is cancelling. Rho a square is cancelling. So ultimately, I will get zero equal to d p plus two rho a d a. Plus zero a square. Okay, and ultimately I can say that a square is nothing but equal to. Okay, let me calculate from here uh, d a. So if I calculate d a, then what I will get? I can say that d a is nothing but d p plus D rho a square divided by minus two rho a. This is my d a. Okay. If I calculate d a by d rho, d a by d rho, then it will become d p by d rho plus a square divided by minus two rho a. Is this one clear? So it means d a by d rho. I can write. This particular quantity, okay, and from the previous equation, I have a is equal to d a by d rho. So this d a by d rho I will replace with this. So what I will get now, my equation one will become a equal to minus rho times in bracket I can write this entire quantity, okay, d p by d rho plus a square. Divided by minus two rho a. Okay, so this rho rho will cancel out. Minus sign will also cancel. So it will become ultimately it will become two a square equal to d p by d rho plus. So I can say from here a square is simply nothing but. d p by d rho okay a square is nothing but d p by d rho so it means that your speed of sound is becoming now d p by d rho what is d p by d rho because of the change in pressure how much density is created uh, density change is actually or uh, density change corresponding to the change in pressure whatever you can relate okay so what i am trying to say over here is that your sound wave is nothing but what it is doing it is changing the density in the immediate whenever it is actually immediate vicinity we are getting energy and then that it is further propagating in the forward direction okay so there will be slight change in density molecules have come close to each other when molecules have come close to each other then only you will be experiencing slightly higher pressure 
but one interesting feature of the sound wave is that the variation in properties of the fluid across sound wave are not huge variation in properties are slight if we have slight variation in properties it means variation uh, it means gradients of the properties across the sound wave will be very very small if gradient of the property is small then i can consider this situation to be nothing but a reversible situation okay is this one clear what i am saying is because variation in properties is very slight so because of the slight variation in property i can consider that uh, my gradients are small if gradients are small then dissipative effects such as thermal conduction and other diffusive effects are nothing but negligible because these effects comes only when we are having presence of gradients within the flow field so i can say that my situation is reversible and moreover i am not doing any heat exchange with the gas molecules when i am speaking okay i am imparting energy but not particularly by using the mode of heat transfer so as there is no heat transfer so it means the process of sound wave propagation is also adiabatic so due to these two reasons i can say this process to be nothing but the isentropic process so as this process is isentropic so it means whatever this pressure and density change we are experiencing just now i have applied these uh, uh, equations so these equations are basically relating the changes in energy so when uh, sorry changes in properties so when these changes in properties are taking place these are taking place in an isentropic manner okay so if for a sound wave these changes are in isentropic manner then i can call a square will be nothing but del p by del rho at isentropic conditions because when we are maintaining this dp by d rho our entropy is also remaining constant so that is also one another fluid property which is coming into picture in defining the sound speed of sound okay so that is the reason i can call it as del p by del rho at constant entropy is this point clear so this is the more generic formulation for speed of sound okay now let's try to uh, further find out we know that rho equal to 1 by v rho is equal to 1 by specific volume so it means d rho will be equal to d rho will be equal to okay let's substitute this my a square will become minus of del p by del v this is at constant entropy and here 1 by v square will i get this 1 by v square or okay v square yes minus of small v square okay so this will become equal to what i can do uh, i can write this as one specific volume i will write over here divided by one specific volume i will write as 1 by v in the denominator minus 1 by v and this i will make del v by del p at constant entropy what is this whole term this is isentropic compressibility if this is isentropic compressibility i can say that a square is nothing but equal to a equal to square root of specific volume by times okay so you can see that how 
velocity of sound is actually related to the compressibility of a fluid so velocity of sound is nothing but over here i can say that inversely proportional to the square root of compressibility okay so that is the reason earlier when we were trying to find out the limiting situation for mach number i have actually related at that time by just saying that speed of sound will be inversely proportional to square root of compressibility now we are able to mathematically also explain it okay so now i will uh, uh, stop at this point and then we will discuss further in the next lecture